please join me in welcoming our special guests, Josh Mastel and Walter Bernstein. Great. Well, thank you both so much for being here. Was it fun to see the film again? Yes. Yes. I hadn't seen it for a while. <coughs> Okay, yeah. When's the last time you saw it about Walter? Oh. Must be 20 years ago. And does it yeah. bring up any memories about working with Zero Mustel? Well, always seeing Zero again brings up memories. You know, and uh, this was <coughs> early in his movie career, you know, and... Uh, but it was just wonderful seeing him again. One of the reasons I love him in this um, particular film so much is that um, it shows him as a song and dance man, and he's so, he's so talented and so light on his feet. I, I love the scene of um, By the Light of the Silvery Moon, even though it's kind of a minor scene in the film. He's, he's so wonderful in it. Well, he's very graceful. You know, and uh, uh, you know he's big, and then he was fat late, uh, later in his life. But he was always very graceful when you saw him. He's like a dancer. How did he do that? Um, <laughs> it, one thing that you might not know is that he had a on 86th Street. He had a a, a New York City bus ran over his leg, and that was uh, previous to uh, doing this movie. So. He had a, a, a barely functioning left leg. I mean, as his friend uh, Nagut Lee says, it looks like a, an old roast beef. Uh, but, so he was in, in quite a bit of pain doing a lot of that. But yes, he was a terrific dancer, very graceful. And my mother was a rockette, so, you know, I'm bred for hoofing. Do you think they had as much fun making the film as it looks like they were having? No. Can you elaborate? Oh, um, Zero, I, I don't think liked people who ranked above him in status, and that would include a director. I think he was friends with Mel Brooks before the movie, uh, but when Mel Brooks was directing, Zero was, uh, to me at least, constantly complaining. Uh, that, but that, that was Zero. I mean, he's, for example, the only actors he really loved were dead actors, like, uh, <laughs> Ramu or Charles Lawton were fabulous, but you know, a live actor, you know, George E. Scott, you know, he didn't like him. He didn't like directors either. No, didn't like directors. And senators were not much either, you know. And Do you know if he was friends with Gene Wilder at all? I have no idea. Did you, did um, you know, Josh? Yeah. Uh, they, they didn't know each other before the film, and they were quite friendly during the film. And when Gene Wilder, I think, won the Academy Award for his performance, didn't mention Zero, Zero hated him. Zero was furious at that. And uh, I read Gene Wilder's book, and I'm of the opinion that Gene was truly terrified of Zero. Um, if you read his, uh, his uh, autobiography, you'll see that... <laughs> He had, he had issues, Gene, and, and zero, zero could be frightening, and I think uh, Gene was. <laughs> but he was wonderful. I mean, Gene Wilder was really, he's very funny, don't you think? I think, I mean, they, they each seem so perfect for the role they inhabit. Yeah. And even though there have been wonderful other fantastically talented actors in those roles since then. Name I, one. I, <laughs> I can't. Um, I think, I mean, part, part of it for me is the comb overs and, you know, that they both have it. And I feel like Bialy <laughs> Stock and Bloom need to have those comb overs. <laughs> Perhaps, yeah. Do you, do you think that um, Zero took part in developing the character in any way? Interesting question. Um, well, that's how, how he would approach a character. I think he, he did it instinctively. Um, uh, Zero, Zero was not what you'd call a technical actor. 
he was more uh, uh, inspirational. I mean, if Zero felt an impulse, he would uh, go for it. He was not, uh, I don't know, he was not uh, nose to the grindstone either. What would I do with this moment? He did whatever he felt like, in, or both on and off stage. He was a, a giant id flying through the world, <laughs> experiencing life whenever he could to its fullest. And Walter, what was it like working with Zero on the front? Well, it was fine, you know. Uh, he, liked do, he liked doing it so far as I knew. Uh, and uh, the, the part meant something to him. It was this uh, uh, comic actor who was uh, uh, blacklisted and ultimately killed himself in the thing. It was a serious part. Uh, and he took it seriously. Uh, he got along well with the director, and the director had been a former actor. Uh, and was very receptive to whatever Zero wanted to do, pretty much. Uh, so for me, it was a pleasure working with him. And I think you, you went through um, the actual blacklist experience with him. Is that correct? Uh, uh, during yes. the hearings in well, Washington? Well, he, he uh, was having a hard time, like, uh, most of the actors uh, during the blacklist. And uh, he got a gig at a hotel in the Borscht uh, circuit uh, called the Concord, where he was to perform his act. And uh, I forget the exact numbers, but I think he was getting $500 for the evening uh, at a place where he used to get 2000 at night. But he had to take it, and uh, uh, I borrowed a car and drove him up to the place. And he got there, and the uh, the manager or the boss, whoever it was, cut the 500 uh, for him. Said he only had 250 for him, and there was nothing Zero felt he could do. He needed the money very badly. Uh, and <coughs> uh, he went on and he did his show before about 1,500 people. It was a big auditorium there in a rage. And uh, he did his act. He insulted the audience in Yiddish. He would call them names. He was trying, he couldn't get the rage out. It was terrible to see. It was awful. And he finished the act, and the more he hated them, and the more he yelled at them, the better he, they liked him. They would laugh and carry on. <laughs> uh, and he finished and uh, sat down, drank half a bottle of whiskey, something, went to bed, and we left the next morning. Uh, but it was a uh, afterward, uh, I w when we did the, I, I wrote the scene for the front to have him do that, but he wouldn't do it. He, he wouldn't recreate it. Uh, and we worked out something where there was a scene afterward in which he, the actor let the rage go, but he wouldn't do the act again. I wanted him to do it, but he wouldn't. So it, it was not a good time. But your friendship with him went back many years, right? Uh, yes, I met Zero first. Must have been about 1948 or something in New Orleans. Uh, he was in a movie called Panic in the Streets that Kazan was directing. And Zero played a part that he played a lot. I, I seem to remember in movies of, of, of the cowardly gangster. Uh, but uh, I, I went down there on business with Ilya Kazan, who was the director, 
and met Zero, and we became friends. We went back that far. Um, I think we may have some questions in the audience. Does, does anyone have a question? And I'll repeat it so everyone can hear. Yes, waving at me. I'll, I'll tell you a, one story about a funny thing. Um, there, there's a, 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 a part where Miles Gloriosus, the great general, comes back and uh, he says, bring me my bride, and it's Jack Guilford pretending to be dead, and they say, oh, you can't have your bride, says my father, Sudalus. He says, why not? He goes, because, and th this night, Zero claimed there was a benefit for syphilitic war veterans. <laughs> he said that they had bought out the house, so he tried to make the show very dirty that night. So when Millis Glorious went, bring me my bride, she goes, no, you can't have it. He goes, why not? And, and he goes, the line was, because the plague! And then there's panic, everybody goes, the plague, the plague, and everybody runs around. But that night, when Millis Glorious was, bring me my bride, she goes, you can't have it. He goes, why not? He goes, the clap! And uh, <laughs> Millis went, the plague! And all the Everybody on stage cracked up, and people were going, the clap, the plague, the and strangely enough, Zero always used that as an example of actors who don't listen. <laughs> yes. In the movie The Front, who was Hecky Brown a composite of, the character that Zero played? Was he based on real people? He wasn't based really on any, any particular person. Actors I had known who were blacklisted, actors who weren't blacklisted, who were comedians who had characteristics. Uh, the only reference I, th I can remember for the character was he had changed his name. Uh, Hecky Brown was the name he used and was his stage name, and uh, but his original name had been Brownstein. Uh, and I based that a little bit on, on John Garfield, uh, whose real name I think was, had been Garfinkel or, uh, or something like that. But otherwise, it wasn't based on any particular person. I wrote it with zero in mind, but uh, Nobody else. Yes. Josh, have you ever thought about writing a book about your dad, or have you written one? Um, I haven't written one. I, I, I have fantasies about doing something worthwhile with my life, but so far they haven't <laughs> panned out. Uh, I guess the funny bone is genetic. <laughs> Yes. So the question is, um, this viewer says the blacklist um, we know affected the film industry more than theater. Um, the question is about um, a funny thing happened on the way to the forum, which was first a play, then a movie, and was being in the film your father's way back into working in film? The, the blacklist seemed to be over. Um, you could always work in theater because they couldn't organize they didn't have the threat of economic boycott like Red Channels did for television and movies. Um, you know, they would p hit on the studios and say, you have communists working for you. Uh, but that didn't happen in the theater, so Zero could always wor do stand-up, although obviously from Walter's story, um, that suffered a little. But he, he would work on, on Broadway. Um, the Blacklist pretty much ended when PBS did a show called The World of Sholem Aleichem. And every blacklisted actor in New York worked in it, just about. And it was the first time any of them had been on television for years. And I think that was in the, uh, the early 60s. Zero was in it, um, you know, Jack Guilford, uh, Herschel Bernardi, every, j just about everybody was in it, you know, all blacklisted. Incidentally, uh, I, I'm, think there's going to be a symposium that uh, I'm one of the people on the panel, Joe Guilford, Jack Guilford's son is there, and 
you know, various, various other red diaper babies. Um, uh, on the 29th of January at, uh, at the Javits Center on Sunday, I, uh, I think it's in the afternoon. I don't know what the venue is, but if you're interested in hearing a bunch of ex-reds talk about their, their lives, um, that would be a, a good place to go, I hope. Yes, in the back. The question for both of you, what was it like working with Mel Brooks? Or, well, for your dad, but... I never worked with Mel Brooks. I no, never Walter worked with Mel Brooks. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you, this, this is kind of a stupid story, but uh, w w when the, uh, the fountain goes off, I was there that night um, with, with my father in his dressing room, and, you know, and at one point he went out and was talking to Mel, and I was with him, and the three of us were talking, and all the grips and people in the crew were around us, and um, I said something, and everybody laughed. And Mel looked around like, what was that? Why are people laughing? I didn't say anything funny. <laughs> it, was, it was funny. I, I think Mel's a, Mel's a laugh junkie. I, I met him years later. We had dinner once, and um, he was a doll. He was very sweet. He was, had nothing but nice things to say about my father, and I, that was very nice, I thought. And that's my Mel Brooks history. <laughs> you know, I know so little about him, I could get a cabinet post in Mel Brooks. <laughs> oh my God, I think we're running out of time. One no, last question, really? yes. Oh, we are running out of time. Yeah. <laughs> Let me tell you. You can count on it. Oh no. yes. You can count on it. It's marvelous how much time we're running out of. Uh, well, it felt great to laugh with all of you. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. <laughs>